Good morning, Lakers. This week, we're going to look at another essential and enjoyable healthy habit that impacts many areas of our lives, and that's eating. If we imagine our body like a car, food is the fuel that we need to regularly fill and keep an eye on its level throughout the day. Not only is it important to not let our fuel run too low or risk running out, we also can't overfill our tanks. It's also essential to add the right type of fuel to our car or body. Putting diesel in a gasoline engine is a recipe for disaster and a pretty pricey repair bill. Same applies with putting the wrong foods into our bodies. Over time, we see the impacts on our bodies and minds, and we want to be smart with how we take care of ourselves. There's a reason our stomach and GI tract is called our second brain. Let's watch this clip and honestly relax listening to the voice of who I imagine is maybe Harry Potter's grandmother as they talk a little bit about a few important items to consider. Food and mood. Eight ways to get you thinking about how your food affects your mood. One, eat regularly. If your blood sugar drops, it can make you feel tired, irritable or depressed. Eating regularly will keep your sugar levels steady. Try food that releases energy slowly, like food high in proteins such as nuts and seeds, oats and whole grains. Two, make sure you're getting the right fats. Your brain needs fatty oils such as omega-3 and 6 to keep it working well. So rather than avoiding all fat, it's important to eat the right ones. Try eating food high in the good fats, like oily fish, chicken, nuts like walnuts and almonds, olive and sunflower oils, sunflower or pumpkin seeds, avocados, or milk, yogurt, cheese, and eggs. Three, increase your protein. Protein has amino acids in it. These make up the chemicals your brain needs to regulate your thoughts and feelings. It also helps control your blood sugar levels. So try eating protein-rich foods. Lean meat, fish, eggs, cheese, legumes like peas, beans and lentils, nuts and seeds. Four, drink more. If you're not hydrated enough, you might find it difficult to concentrate or think clearly. You might also start to feel constipated, which puts no one in a good mood. Water is great, but why not try drinking herbal or green tea or diluted fruit juice? Five, eat a rainbow of fruit and vegetables. Vegetables and fruit contain a lot of the minerals, vitamins and fibre we need to keep us physically and mentally healthy. Eating a variety of different colours every day means you'll get a good range of nutrients. Six, cut down on the caffeine. Having too much caffeine can make you feel anxious and depressed, disturb your sleep, especially if you're having it last thing at night, or give you withdrawal symptoms when you stop suddenly. Caffeine is in things like coffee, tea, chocolate, cola, and energy drinks. You might feel better if you stop drinking caffeine completely, but just cutting down will help too. Seven, pay attention to your gut. Your gut and your brain use similar chemicals. So keeping your gut healthy can help to keep your brain healthy too. Healthy gut foods include fibre-rich foods like fruits, vegetables and whole grains and live yoghurts which contain probiotics. Remember that it might take time for your gut to get used to a new eating pattern, so make changes slowly. 8. Are you intolerant? Sometimes people have food intolerances which can affect both your mental and physical health. If you're worried you might be intolerant, you could contact a professional dietitian or nutritionist. Remember that any changes you make might take time for your body and your mind to get used to. So if you're changing to a new eating pattern, it might take a while for you to start feeling the benefits. Those eight tips are important to think about. Just like many things related to healthy habits, it can be tough to start new healthy patterns. And perhaps not all of the ideas are a good fit or a good fit right now for you. Try picking one to be purposeful about. Maybe it's as simple as drinking more water or cutting back on the caffeine a bit over time. While the goal is to be healthy, the real goal is to be healthier over time. Moving the needle a little bit at a time is an important part of the journey. 
Dr. Selhub notes on a Harvard Medical School write-up on nutritional psychiatry that everything we eat or ingest, and that includes drinks, directly affects the structure and function of the brain and ultimately our moods. And it demands top of the line fuel for the best performance. One example of how food impacts our brain and mood is food high in refined sugars, like most processed and junk foods, or for example, pretty much anything you can find at 7-Eleven. Those items harm your brain, causing impaired brain function over time, as well as increased likelihood of mood disorders like depression. On the flip side, eating whole foods, and no, not whole foods, whole foods meaning the whole item, um, and minimally processed. And diets like the so-called Mediterranean diet, and we all have a diet, just so you know, not to be confused with highly, highly restrictive fad diets, like say Beachbody. The Mediterranean diet is mainly eating fish, seafood, beans, legumes, leafy greens, and other vegetables, also things like olive oil, yogurt, and nuts. Those items help combat depression and even protect our brains against it. Studies have shown it to reduce the risk of depression by up to 42%, which if you're not into research, that's a pretty big number. As depression has become the largest disability worldwide, this is even more important. While eating is not our sole solution, and there are many other factors at play, including trauma, brain chemistry, family finances, for example, one thing that everyone has in common is that we all eat. So this is one thing that, like I mentioned before, you can start working on and making changes where you can. Maybe it isn't all about the Mediterranean diet, and maybe you try to eat nuts as a snack instead of Cheetos. Or see about maybe adding fish three times a month for dinner. On a more fun note, while eating healthier may mean cutting back on some of our favorite items like chips or ice cream, it doesn't mean we never get to eat it. It just means we need to eat it sparingly or in moderation. Another prominent issue that is seen, especially in adolescents, is intermittent eating. No is a pretty frequent response to when I ask students if they ate breakfast or lunch. There are a lot of potential issues with not eating regularly. First, homeostasis is making yet another appearance, and that matters because your body thrives in routines and patterns. When your food intake is unpredictable day after day, you add a level of stress on your body that can cause adverse reactions. It also helps support a good metabolism, which helps us process food efficiently, letting us get the most nutrients out of each meal, while also helping us maintain a healthy digestion and also maintain things like weight. While surprises and unpredictability can be exciting and feel like an adventure in some parts of our lives, we generally don't want those words associated with our brain and body. A few foods that have shown to have positive impacts on our mood that you may think about including in your diet in moderation include fatty fish like salmon or tuna. All fat is not created equal, and we actually need certain types of fat to survive. Omega-3s are one of those, and our body can't actually make it on our own, so we have to get it through our diet. Another one is a sweet and savory treat like dark chocolate. This can provide a big brain boost, but just avoid eating the whole bar. A single square or two will do the trick. The bacteria in our gut have a lot to do with our mood, and eating fermented food like yogurt, kombucha, kimchi, which all have high levels of probiotics, can boost our gut flora and result in a healthier GI tract, which boosts our overall brain health. Another one is eating a banana. A combination of vitamin B6, the natural sugars found in bananas, and fiber helps stabilize blood sugar and mood. B6 helps also in the creation of serotonin and dopamine, which are both feel-good chemicals that our brain thrives on. And our last example is nuts and seeds are full of things like healthy proteins, healthy fats, and fiber. A study over 10 years showed that even moderate intake of nuts and seeds can reduce the risk of depression by up to 23%. There are other great foods to look at adding over time to your diet that can help with making a healthy habit out of eating. As with any changes, try easing into it and picking one or two things that you'll try. With any health-related advice, it's always a good idea to talk to a parent or guardian and consider consulting a physician about any questions or concerns. Let's continue to work on crafting healthy habits to support long, healthy, and happy lives. Take it easy this week, Lakers. We'll see you next time.